Hi guys, it's Babs Alexander, your international vocal coach coming to you live with another great interview with Dr. Yo Yoav. Let me see it correct. Am I correct, Dr. Yoav? Yes, yes, ma'am. Awesome, Hi. awesome. Thanks for he has me. he all these beautiful acronyms, D-P-T-O-C-S, DIP, D, I mean M-D-T, C-S, 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 is a trailblazer in representing the transformative McKinsey method of self-treatment. His, his finally home speaking skills allow him to explain complex orthopedic issues with ease, empowering his audience to self-treat common problems without the need of medications, good, injections, or surgery. After serving in the Israeli Air Force, Dr. Yoav made his mark in New York City, graduating magnum cum laude from Hunter College. He went on to earn his doctorate in physical therapy from New York University and became a certified specialist in mechanical diagnosis and therapy, MDT. He also holds the prestigious orthopedic clinical specialist, OCS, Certification and his strength and conditioning specialist. Dr. Yoav's dedication extends beyond his Miami Beach practice as he imparts his expertise to fellow healthcare professionals through his work with the McKenzie Institute USA. Today, we have the privilege of exploring the importance of posture, so important, on both voice and appearance, as well as unraveling the life-changing insights of the TEDx talk, the wisdom in his book, Aging Without Aching, can't wait to read it, and the profound impact of his YouTube video, Understanding Lower Back Pain and Sciatica. Woo! We're going to get into it, Dr. Do Dr. Yoav. So, Dr. Yoav, Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for being here, and my goodness, you have been a very busy man. <laughs> Thanks for thank having you. me, Bob. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, because you know, I've been talking to our audience about total body with the voice. For some reason, people think the voice is disconnected from the body. And that's not the truth. <laughs> so it's a whole, a whole well-being here. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to just sort of talk and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're doing and what's happening uh, there with you. Now, are, you're in Miami now? I'm in Miami Beach right now. Oh, I uh, came originally from Israel in 95 to New York City, as Babs mentioned, and actually started my career as a personal trainer in New York in the 90s injured a bunch of people unintentionally and I wanted to get better at what I do. So I got to NYU and did my clinical doctorate in physical therapy, went to study the McKenzie method, postgraduate, and um, I'm now a senior faculty with the McKenzie Institute USA. And the teachings of Robin McKenzie, who, who developed the McKenzie method, one of the most important things Robin mentioned is how to make sure that everyone not only sits properly, but also stands properly. And you, as you know, as a, as a vocal coach, as a, as, a, as a speaker yourself, you know how important it is when we get on the stage, when we open our body, our vocal cords can transmit our voice, can produce sound versus what happens to people as they get on the stage or when they close their body, their lungs are closed, but this is hard. Here's the problem. We were told as kids, when we were young, we were told by our teachers, by our parents, sit straight. Yeah. Now, after five minutes, when, when mom left the room, we went here. When the teacher didn't notice, we all slouched. And we tried to hold ourselves upright again, but it's a very hard concept to achieve. It's hard to maintain good, elegant, open, upright posture. None of, none of us want to age with a forward head position where we close the ability of the ribs to expand. It's important to age with an elegant, open, upright posture. And McKenzie developed during his uh, years of developing the method, 
you realize that there are certain exercises that one can do in order to open their body up. So I'm 52. I will never age towards a cane or towards a walker. I will never age stock forward. There are certain things I do daily to make sure I maintain an elegant, open, upright posture. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's it, it has two, as far as, as far as your listeners go, it has two important benefits. Number one, your ability to produce tone and voice improves when you're open, when your chest is open, when you're standing upright. Mm -hmm. Number two, it looks better. It's important to be aware of the position of our body, the position of our spine when we get on the stage, when we go into a meeting. You know, it's on a daily basis I meet people that come and shake my hand and they're all rounded and, you know, give me this mushy little hand versus open up, nice to meet you, straight look into the eyes, chest is open, body is open. That transmits a whole different energy. And, and so not only I teach professionals the McKenzie method, I love teaching the public. Lame individuals, people who do not uh, necessarily deal in healthcare, how to age with an elegant, upright posture. I wrote a book called Aging Without Aching, which you can find on Amazon. And in the book, I share a few concepts. Some are related to what I learned from Robin McKenzie, the great Robin McKenzie himself. And some are exercises that I do daily with my patients here in my office in Miami Beach, where people come here, and especially now post-pandemic, where so many people work from home, where they left the ergonomic setup in the office and worked in these kinds of posture on computers and on their phones, closing the body, and now they want to go and sing, they want to go and speak, but their body is locked in, and it has to open up in order for us to uh, present ourselves in, in the best way we can. Right. So true. So true. And that's the one thing I, I when I talk to uh, people about vocal technique, that is one of the points that I say to them on a regular basis is you have to have an open chest so the air, the cavity can be able to breathe so the air can be able to come through and flow, you know? So uh, that is, I, and I'm glad that you brought that uh, through. And all of this wind up causing us to have other problems. Can you talk to us about problems uh, that has happened or that happens while they're in the point of almost cur curling over? Sure. So there are two letters I like to use um, as they pertain to the spine. There are two letters the spine can fall into. One of it is the letter C and the other one is the letter S. And I want to make sure we have a picture of it here. I'll look for it, see if I have it. Here we go. So think of the letter C. When we sit in the letter C, think of chaos. C for chaos, S for safety. We also, and I'm sure your listeners also, you hang out on your sofa or you sit in your car for a prolonged period of, period of time, in this letter C, you drive or you sit on your couch, you're watching TV, you go to the refrigerator, you get up to get some water, and you're stuck in that letter C. You walk around the house a little bit with a little limp. You may feel some sciatica, which is leg pain uh, that comes from the back. And you often walk around the house. Within a minute or two, it starts to feel better because you transitioned yourself from a C into an S. Now, Mechanical back pain is the most common pain we feel as human beings. You can avoid mechanical back pain if you are aware of the mechanics of your spine and you do specific exercises that I do basically daily to make sure my lower back is supple, it's not stiff, it's flexible. Not only lower back pain and sciatica are an issue, also uh, neck pain and stiffness in the neck, pain that radiates down into the shoulder blade or down the arm can be a problem. When someone hangs out in a C curvature, such as, for example, when someone watches um, TV for a prolonged period of time in bed, leaning against the headboard 
or reading in bed with pillows behind the neck, you're actually blocking your spine's ability to expand and transmit electricity into your organs, into your muscles, into your, into your uh, lungs, into your gallbladder, your kidneys, everything receives power from the spine. When we hang in these positions for too long, we are creating mechanical problems in the neck that can eventually lead to uh, neurological symptoms that will manifest from the neck and will lead into pain that radiates down the arm. So no one can perform on a stage or no one can speak in a conference if they suffer. I mean, they force they can, but it, it's going to make it much harder if you suffer from those aches and pains, whether it's lower back pain, sciatica, neck pain, and stiffness. So there are things I do daily uh, on my own body, and you really should get assessed first by a McKenzie trained clinician. You can go to the McKenzie Institute USA.org, and you can find there, find a clinician. You can find based on your zip code who's a McKenzie trained clinician in your neighborhood. But the things I do for my lower back, daily and for my neck daily are the following number one daily i make sure that my flexibility to push my upper trunk up what's called extension in line i do that daily i make sure also that my lower back is flexible in bending in this direction. We rarely go in this direction during our day. About 3,500 times a day, we bend forward to do things because our eyes are here. If I had eyes in the back of my head, I would chop a salad this way, but I don't. Everything we do in life involves moving us in this direction, what we see. And then remember, we age in this direction. So that's how we see our parents, grandparents, friends of our parents. People are stuck here. So it's important to make sure the lower back has flexibility and, and there is no movement loss in that direction, called, which is called extension. The second thing I do for my neck, anywhere from 40 to 60 repetitions a day, is movement of the head directly backward. Think of someone that ate a lot of garlic with really bad teeth is coming to kiss you and you're moving your head straight back don't let your nose come up drive your head straight back and i do this whenever i get a chance five repetitions here 10 repetitions there red light i try to smash my headrest i do this also because i used to feel before i started this method i used to feel radicular pain, nerve pain that was radiating from my neck down into my shoulder blade and into my arm. And I learned that posture, and when I maintain good posture, I can keep those aches and pains away. And so daily I do it to prevent recurrence. In addition to retractions of my neck, I also extend my neck and I move my nose a little bit left and right, which again, we usually don't do on daily basis, and your listeners should get an assessment, mechanical assessment by a trained McKenzie clinician. Another thing I would recommend if people are interested, McKenzie wrote two best-selling books that you can find on Amazon, Treat Your Own Neck and Treat Your Own Back. And these are, I think, 10, 12 bucks on Amazon that one can read and understand what mechanical pain is and, and, and get exercises to prevent it. So posture is really, 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 really important. Finally, Robin McKenzie developed an exercise, which is uh, the exercise I talk about in my TEDx talk. It's called the slouch overcorrect. The slouch overcorrect is by far an exercise that I use daily with my patients who are interested in achieving elegant upright posture, which are interested in opening their chest wall, which are in those who are uh, saying, I'm done looking like this and I want to achieve, you know, an open state of my spine. And to achieve that, basically, you sit slouch. That's your rest period. You lift yourself all the way up by accentuating the lumbar spine, by pushing this forward. And at the top of the motion, I retract my head. I hold it for a few seconds and I let go. And again, I lift you myself all the way to 100% erect posture. I retract my head back, hold it for a couple of seconds, 
and let go. 10 repetitions, oh, wow. um, five, six times a day, followed by sitting always. This is what's called a McKenzie lumbar roll. Always try to maintain. Most people, majority of people need support in the lower back when they're sitting. Those of you who know you have it in your car seat, there's a button in your car seat. When you press it, the lower back, the lumbar support gets pushed forward. Then I can work in this position without falling into that C, into that chaotic, problematic position. I'm maintaining upright posture. It maintains the work that I've done. And the goal is to always sit with something in the lower back when we try to either sit and work or just hang out. Well, just a mouthful. See me over here trying to get it. Wait a minute, let me see if I got all of this. Because that was so exciting. You about to make me call my administrator in here because Miss Sue has got to hear this. So the first, first exercise, which I could not hear what, what the name was. It started with you lying down on your back, lying on the floor, and then you're lifting the back up. On your stomach. It's called extensions in line. Extensions in line. Okay. I do that in, in uh, the gym. You know, and the yeah. the one thing I realized, because as a uh, music teacher, uh, for many years, the first thing I talked to them about was their posture, because I talked to them about singer's position. You cannot come into a classroom and they cannot give you just any kind of chair when you are having a choral class. It's important that they're able to sit at the edge of their seats. I always tell them to put their hands on their knees and push their back straight so they can sit in singer's position. Many times you find them when you're not singing, slouching. And I told them it's called the toilet, the toilet stool slouch, because many times you'll see them hunched over and with their knees, with their uh, elbows on their knees. And I was like, get off the toilet, get off the toilet. Please remember while you're doing that. Now, this is something because I've been teaching for 30 years. So this is something that I've been doing for many, many years with them, but never thinking of the capacity of the way that you have brought it forward um, on talking about the various exercises of which, you know, we, we hence sort of heard or have been doing half done, especially in the gym. I go to the gym daily and, you know, the, uh, the, the one I, I get on is, you know, the, the seat you have the little roll right there, and it pulls you. You get you roll back with this with the roll, you know. But I'm going to, especially when you say we need to be doing this five to six times in ten repetitions with the slouch over correct, because I don't think we even think about half the things. And if you guys have heard of about the McKinsey method, leave your comments below. I really would love to hear how many more of you have heard about this and you guys have got to get this book. Show them that book again, Dr. Yoav, because they need to know about the book. I'm buying the book. I, I need to get it because, you know, I'm 54 and this is totally important. Aging without aching, because I'm telling you, you're absolutely correct. After driving for such a long period of time, when you stand up, uh, it takes a minute to get out of the C position back into the S position. And so in order for us to do that, we we really are trying to get in me. I have to walk around for a minute and, me, and eventually it'll pop back up. But uh, I'm definitely going to be trying a couple of these and having a good conversation with my doctor about all of this so we can <laughs> make sure it's it's where we need to be. Go on. Always make sure, always make sure you're sitting with the lumbar roll, even in the car, even if the car has one, I would okay. still encourage you to always sit with some support in the lower back. That transitional stiffness that you're feeling when you put your hand in the lower back and you walk around and you feel like the body is out of alignment, right. and then eventually it gets back into alignment, is the spine trying to go from a C into the S. Once it's in an S, usually 
nerve compression decreases, your, your muscles will feel looser, your legs will start to work better. But unfortunately, as you mentioned, throughout the day, a lot of people hang in a toilet position. You know, the average person hangs forward, as I mentioned before, 3,500 times a day. Everything we do in life involves bending forward. And so wow. if we bend forward on, you know, doing any activities, you know, uh, working on a computer, sitting on a bike, a lot of people, for example, during the pandemic, sat at home. This is the toilet position, this guy with a red shirt. Absolutely. On his elbows. So <laughs> yeah. people sat like this at home, but then they bought a pellet or they bought a bike, any kind of bike, and they, and they continue to push again. their spine into a C curvature. That is compounded on top of making the bed, cleaning, you know, gardening. Everything we do in life involves forward bends. We rarely do things that will move our spine, you know, in the opposite direction. So here is where it gets even more interesting. In my book, I mentioned if your back is stiff and you sit in the car or you bend forward and you get spasms in your back, usually these stretches are not appropriate, although they feel good. And again, you should get a mechanical assessment. Often the answer is in extending the spine and not flexing the spine. I never knew it. So a lot of my clients who had back pain over the years, you know, I stretched them in this direction and some of them got much worse as a result of it. And I was upset that some people are trying to stay fit and I'm giving them stretches and the stretches actually make them worse. Mm. And I thought, because I thought stretching is the most important thing in the world. Well, it right. depends. It depends on how you live your life. And it depends on how you you balance the forces between flexing your spine and extending your spine. It's very important as we age to make sure we are not aging, starting again, to get stuck here. This is elegant. This is important. This is relevant. This is healthy. This is safe. This has a problem. Not only that, aging with a forward position increases the chance of falls because our center of gravity is in front of us. So we all know from friends of our parents, our grandparents, people fall as they get older and you can decrease the chance of falls if you maintain an elegant, open, upright posture. Okay. Well, I, I'm I'm really going to. Uh, <laughs> I think this is a life life changing, game changer uh, conversation here, not just for me, but for many many people. Because I do not think that we ever think that way about our forward movement. You know, to a point where it really starts to uh, debilitate you, and um, then <laughs> then you're wondering why do we have this curvature when reality is we curving all the single time and never thinking about going in a, a backward a backward uh, motion. Now you said uh, before that you need to get a McKin uh, a McKinsey trained physician. Can you tell us a little bit again where we can find that physician so we can all be able to get that kind of assessment? So it's a McKinsey trained clinician. It could be a physical therapist, a chiropractor, or athletic trainer. Usually, you'll see on the McKinsey Institute website, which is www. mckenzie.mck E N Z I E McKenzie mm -hmm. Institute USA dot org. If you just put on Google McKenzie Institute, you will find it. On the first okay. page, at the top of the page, you will see a drop down menu. Find a provider. You put your zip code, and you can choose ten or twenty five or fifty miles around you. And your your goal is to try to get a mechanical assessment of your spine first in order for you to know which are the exercises that are appropriate for your particular problem. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's so awesome. And thank you so much, Dr. Yoav, uh, for giving us all of this information. And I, I know that I'm going to uh, be going through all of this with the lower black back flexibility and definitely getting a, the lumbar. So on the McKenzie Institute, USA.org, uh, is that where you get the lumbar roll as well? The lumbar roll, the lumbar roll you can find on Amazon. You will see if you just put McKenzie lumbar roll, for example, you will never see LeBron James without a lumbar roll. If okay. you Google Chris Paul, 
There's 10 things Chris Paul doesn't leave the house with. Number one is Alain Barreau. These guys run faster, jump higher, because they know how important it is to maintain uh, support of the lumbar spine, especially, you know, people who, who sit or people who are active. We need to have the lumbar spine supported when we sit. In today's society, we bend multiple times forward. We look down at our phone, and so our posture becomes more and more uh, curved. That's why it's super important to not only use the, the McKenzie method to assess your problem, but to also learn prevention strategies. And one of the prevention strategies is using a lumbar roll on a daily basis. Okay. Well, that sounds awesome. And thank you so much uh, for being here today because you have given us a mouthful, but a lot of insight on what we're doing and it makes the connection of the voice even clearer now. Beautiful. So it helps Thank you. you to, Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's a, I think it was like a, 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 a I guess a, a, a destined meant to be together because it really is, it makes a, it's a lot clearer when you're starting to talk to people about the importance of their posture, especially it is hard to breathe when you're, uh, it just opens right up, you know? And it's so important for them to make sure because you cannot hold your breath for any long period of time when you're bent over in a position, except that you're able to release it so that air can flow. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it, Dr. Leo Av. We, we're, you know, we might be having you again on a symposium because I've been wanting to do a vocal symposium and the total body is really, really coming into play in here. Now, would you like to say anything to our audience or would like to leave anything with them or tell us anything you'd like to say at this time? Uh, those of you who are Instagram on Instagram, feel free to follow me at Dr. Yoav on Instagram. Um, D-R-Y-O-A-V. Um, let me see if there's anything else. I'm also on LinkedIn under Yoav Suprun, S-U-P-R-U-N. And my Facebook is South Beach Spine and Extremities. You can find me on Facebook as well. South Beach Spine and Extremities? Yes. All Sobe, right. Yeah, it's called Sobe Spine. Sobe Spine. My website is sobespine.com. Okay. And my uh my speaking business, which is for corporation, is is uh under dryoav.com. D R Y O A V dot com. Okay. Gotcha. And thank you so much, Dr. Yoav. I'm looking forward for to having uh, me about talking to you again and having you at the voice summit. It's gonna be an in-person thing Great at idea. some point. <laughs> I started when I first started uh, uh going more into my practice, I created one and I was like, oh my gosh, it was so powerful. But I felt like it was more components, and I am correct. We definitely need to be more components in there. So we're looking forward to talking and working with you again. Love it. I love it. Voice summit. I love it. Love it. I'll yes. be happy to, to help you, you know, create a successful event and do, you know, breakout sessions on how to open your posture. Yes, absolutely. And thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you, and you take care. You too. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.